The reason that so many average folks hate the rich, hate the wealthy, hate the powerful, hate big CEOs and major corporations is not necessarily because they're successful. Sure, there's always that natural human reaction of bitterness and resentment and jealousy, but by and large, it's not the fact that these people are wealthy or these corporations that are successful that really bothers the average folks. It's the fact that these companies, these major power brokers, these wealthy people violate basic tenets of things such as leadership. You know, real good leadership is sacrificing yourself for the greater good, sacrificing yourself and your own interests so others may prosper. And instead, what we have in this country, but surely across the world as a whole, but specifically in the U.S., is you have this overwhelming culture that has been manifested, harbored, nurtured for generations. It's not a new phenomenon where the powerful will sacrifice others for their own gain. And that's why we don't like them. It flies in the face of basic leadership. And one person, individual, who consistently demonstrates that lack of real leadership is Vincent K. McMahon. Just because you have authority, just because you have power, does not make you a leader in any stretch of the imagination. And you saw this recently with all the massive roster cuts the WWE did, and surely you could sit there and try and blame it on the coronavirus. It's COVID-19 related. And I'm not saying that there isn't a small, small part of that that may have necessitated some of it. But also some of it is the fact that Vince McMahon lost his ass yet again on the XFL, yet again. And instead of falling on his own sword, instead of having to sacrifice some of his own self for the greater good, he sacrificed others so that he may be successful. Just like you're seeing now, the fact that they're trying to go back and do live shows is to sit there and make sure that they don't give Fox an opportunity of any kind to get out of the contract due to the lack of live shows being run. You know, you, you see this. It's this consistent lack of leadership. The first thing that somebody like a Vince McMahon does, instead of trying to really take a look at everything and evaluate things to make sure that everybody has a chance to make it through in a tough time like this for so many people out there, is they will take the instant knee-jerk reflex reactionary move of just firing people. Really piss-poor leadership and exactly what the hell you would expect in today's American corporate culture. But when you listen to Vince McMahon talk on the most recent earnings call, if that doesn't bother you, this other element should just be really striking in terms of just how poor his leadership is. And again, I want to emphasize, authority, power, and control does not equate to leadership in any way, shape, or form. When asked about the ratings and the viewership numbers dropping for his flagship shows like Raw, SmackDown, Lesser Extent, NXT, instead of taking accountability, taking blame, taking responsibility, he passes the buck and says it's because of new talent and the lack of fans in the crowd. That's the reason that viewership is down. That's the reason that ratings are decreasing. And that, that right there, just crystallizes and perfectly embodies the absolute lack of leadership of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Because for him to blame a lack of crowds, for him to blame a lack of abilities by the new talent, just speaks to how much he enjoys having the authority, the power, the control over everything, but none of the responsibility and accountability that should come along with that. Because I got a newsflash for you, Vince. You can't sit there and always have it your way and be all about you and at the end of the day, nothing happens without your sign-off. And then all of a sudden, when things go bad, you blame everybody else up to and including except yourself. That's not how this works, Vince. How ridiculous and stupid this is. 
for him to sit there and try to blame new talent as the reason why viewership is decreasing. When he's on the freaking call, and he's talking about not having Brock Lesnar there hurt. Oh yeah, because he was such a ratings boom for you the past couple of years anyway. Plus the eight old. And then, when you say, I've got a new WWE champion. What's his name, Vince? You've got a new champion. What's his name, Vince? Instead of sitting there and blaming the new talent, how about you leverage an opportunity like the earnings call to talk about the new talent? You wonder why people can't get freaking over, why they don't want to be stars, why they aren't stars, and they never will be mega stars anymore. It's because of crap like that. You're sitting there talking and mentioning by name the guy who isn't there, who's not going to be there, and you're freaking giving your fucking world champion damn near quasi Benoit treatment by refusing to refer to him by name. Like saying Drew McIntyre is as dirty of a word as freaking saying wrestling on your television programming. The hell is wrong with you? It's the fault of the talent, my ass. If your shows were written better, if your shows were produced better, if you actually knew how to tell stories, maybe things wouldn't be declining in terms of viewership. You ever think about that, Vince? You ever think it could be anything due to the fact that you do so many things over the years to undercut so many of these talents that when you actually may put them in a position to have any type of success and actually have a legitimate shot at getting over, nobody's going to give a crap. And that's your fault. Because you've made it that way. And no matter how many people you fire or future endeavor, that fact is not going to change. And if you want to sit there and blame the new talent, you want to sit there and blame the crowd and not having fans there. Okay, let's deal with the new talent part. At the end of the day, nobody gets signed without Vince's approval. If the talent sucks, then who's the one that signed off on bringing them in, you asshat? It's you. You are the effing problem. You have been the problem for over a decade and a half. Ever since you left the World Wildlife Federation, punk your sorry ass out. You've never been the same. When you got the F out, all the fun fucking went with it. Seriously. You got his ass punked by the World Wildlife Federation. That was the moment that everything changed. Not even the going public late in 99. It was getting his ass punked out in 2002 by the WWF, so to speak. Once that happened, it's been precipitously downhill the past 18 fucking years, and it ain't changing. It ain't changing. Who's the guy that's bringing in all these talents that can't actually work, that can't tell a story to save their damn lives in the ring, that can't talk on the mic, that can't be personalities and larger-than-life characters that actually entertain people outside of having to go out there and crash guest dummy their way through 10 or 12 minutes on television because they don't have real talent and they don't know any other way to freaking get over. You're the idiot. You're the animal that keeps signing these guys. So how dare you blame the new talent? They don't know any freaking better, clearly, because they didn't actually learn as they were coming up through the ranks how to truly get over in meaningful ways. It's your fault, Vince, and as far as the lack of crowds, the lack of fans. No, 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 no. Don't blame this crap. With so few actual legitimate entertainment options out there, especially in the world or form of sports, if anything, if WWE had their ducks in a row, if AEW had their ducks in a row, viewership should be increasing, not decreasing by default. If your product was halfway compelling, halfway even competent, in no way, shape, or form would you have any possibility of your viewership numbers decreasing, and yet, here we sit, they are. Oh, but sure, blame the effing Rona. Let's blame the Rona. What a cheap, cop-out, lazy-ass excuse that is. No, the fact of the matter remains is when you talk about the lack of fans in attendance, the lack of crowds, all that does is remove that kind of cheap element that makes you feel like you're better than you actually are. And once you remove that from the equation, 
It puts the spotlight and the focus on what really matters when it comes to professional wrestling. Not the move match mark BS that these Wednesday Night Wrestling War nerds talk about. Oh, wow, look at how well Dynamite and NXT are doing. Oh, I'm throwing it out of the water. When you don't have fans, this is when the elements of storytelling, character development, quality booking, talent that can actually talk on the mic, talent that isn't booked in a 50-50 half-ass way, talent that can actually be characters, larger-than-life personalities. That's when those things are the most important, the most fundamental things become the most important. And when you are a brand, you are a company such as yours who has intentionally gone out of their way for years, for years, ever since Rock and Austin left the way they did in the early 2000s and then Lester decided after WrestleMania 20 he wanted to go play foosball for the mic. You intentionally made a decision. You weren't going to even try to create any massive stars anymore. You would take a guy or two, make them your prop champions, put them in a spot you can feel comfortable with, but you weren't truly trying to make them next level mainstream massive stars. You did it with Cena. You're trying to do it with Reigns. This is all conscientious decisions made by you. The lack of long-term vision for your characters, the lack of long-term, quality, sensible booking, the lack of just interesting, compelling elements in your storytelling. Those have been things that have been there for a long time that you've been able to hide behind not having because sometimes you could pop a crowd cheaply due to some cheap heat or a freaking spot in a stupid match. That means nothing. But when so much of your shows feel like one gigantic waste of time and that you absolutely miss nothing if you didn't watch them live, no amount of fans are going to help you. At some point in time, your chickens come home to roost. And if we want to talk about the Rona excuse, you want to talk about the Rona excuse, let's talk about that. Because in the cases of businesses like this, all Rona's doing is accelerating reality one way or another. You have certain digital work-at-home type brands that are doing quite well right now. Rona accelerated their growth. Amazon is doing exceedingly, expressly well. Again, the Rona only accelerating their success and their growth. And other companies, other businesses, not equipped to deal with this unique situation, not equipped to deal with the times that we are in, all the Rona did was accelerated their downturn, if not their complete failure and bust. And that's all Rona is doing here. You are not losing viewers because of Rona. It is just accelerating it by exposing the bigger, larger problems with the brand, which most importantly of all, number one, Vince, is you!